कुंज गोपी चन बाला किरी पर गोपी चन बाला किरी पर यशोर नंदन प्रज जन रंजन यशोर नंदन प्रज जन रंजन यमुन थीरा वन यमुन थीरा वन चाय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी चन बाला किरीट बर धारी गोपी चन बाला किरीट बर धारी यशोर नंदन प्रज जन रंजन यशोर नंदन प्रज जन रंजन यमुन थीरा वन चारी यमुन थीरा वन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 रामो हरे रामो राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato jaya mudhirayet Nasta praeshu vabhadreshu Nityam bhagavata sevaya Bhagavati utama shloke Bhaktir bhavati naishtiki So this morning, in Radha Partha Sarati Mandir, we are reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 25, The Characteristics of King Puranjan, text number 14. Prakar, prakara, prakara parivan, an, antika, antia, uh, I'm, not, I'm not able to see this very well. Can I get better light on this? Prakaro pavan atala. Prakaro Pavanatala Parikar Akshatoranai Parikar Akshatoranai Swarna Rupiaya Sai Sringai Swarna Rupiaksha Sai Shringai Sankulam Sarvato Grihai Sankulam Sarvato Grihai Prakaro Pavanatala Parikair Aksha Toranai Swarna Ropia Yasai Shringai Sankulam Sarvato Grihai Praharo Pavanal Tala Parikair Aksha Toranai Swarna Rupya Yasai Shringai Sankulam Sarvato Grihai
villages. Prakara walls Upavana parks Atala towers Parikai with trenches Aksha windows Toranai with gates Swarna Gold, Rasagya, oh, Rasapya, Silver, Ayasai, made of iron, Shringai, with domes, Sankalam, congested, Sarvata, everywhere, Grihai, with houses. Translation, that city was surrounded by walls and parks and within it were towers, canal, canals, windows and outlets. The houses there were decorated with domes made of gold, silver and iron. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. The body is protected by walls of skin. The hairs of the body are compared to parks, and the highest parts of the body, like the nose and head, are compared to towers. Yeah, amazing. Yeah? The wrinkles and depressions on different parts of the body are compared to trenches or canals. The eyes are compared to windows, and the eyelids are compared to protective gates. The three types of metal, gold, silver, and iron, represent the three modes of material nature. Gold represents goodness, silver, passion, and iron, ignorance. The body is also sometimes considered to be a bag containing three elements, three datu, mucus, bile, and air, kappa, pitta, and vayu. Yashatma buddhi guna petri datuke. According to Bhagavatam, one who considers this bag of mucus, bile, and air to be the self is considered no better than a cow or an, an ass. Thus ends Bhaktivedanta purports to text number 14. Translation again. That city was surrounded by walls and parks, and within it were towers, canals, windows, and outlets. The houses there were decorated with domes made of gold, silver, and iron. Om Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Chalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam 
श्री राधा कृष्ण पदान सहागना ललिता श्री विशाखा नितम हे कृष्ण करना सिंधो धीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमस्ते तप्त कांचन गौरंगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुधे देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नम ओं विष्णु पाठा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमाते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवे घोरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष्य शून्यवाधी पश्चात्यशतारिने जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री हद्वैत गाधार श्रीवासरे गौर भक्त बिंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे तो वर हियरिंग द राधा मुनि प्रीच ही आल्सो गॉट अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट प्लेस टू प्रीच राइट द राधा मुनि ग्रेट personality could travel everywhere and deliver the fallen conditioned souls so here in this particular chapter of shrimad bhagavatam narada muni is preaching to king prachini barishat king prachini barishat his sons have gone off to do austerities and king prachini barishat was a pious man in some ways he at least he thought he was pious most of us usually think we're pious right do you think you know you th- we usually think we're pious i'm a pious person i go to temple i'm pious you know, so prachini barishat was thinking he was a pious man he was doing his karmakandi sacrifices means he was killing animals in sacrifice a lot of people still do animal sacrifices the muslim people they they're supposed to sacrifice the animals they're supposed to recite mantras uh kali pujas are often done there's temples in malaysia there's temples even south india maybe even here in delhi i don't know but kali puja is done and they bring the goats especially on the dark moon night right they still do huh yeah animal sacrifices hindu religion christian religion i don't think they do any animal they just kill them without sacrifice and they call it christmas uh, they give it they call it a holy day when they eat more meat so uh king prachini barishat was accustomed to doing animal sacrifices and narada muni came to preach to him now narada muni we said he's a very great spiritual master he has disciples like Dhruva Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj, Srila Vyasadev, you know, pretty powerful. Must be a very powerful guru, you know, such great disciples. And we were in Navadweep Dam, we were hearing about Suvarna Sen. Right? Suvarna Sen, he was also visited by Narada Muni. Suvarna Sen was also another king who thought he was pious until narada muni came and told him 
So here in Srimad Bhagavatam, Narada Muni has come to Prachini Barishat and he's telling this king about Puranjan. He's, he's, he's not telling him that you're in Maya, that this is nonsense, you got to stop this killing, you will be killed. He didn't tell him like that. He didn't come down so heavily on the king. Prabhupada said, Lord Buddha came, he just stopped the killing. Just got the, led the people away from the Vedas completely. But Narada Muni is not doing that. He's using a different approach. We see he's a very versatile preacher. You know, if you, just like if you're a book distributor, you don't want to be using the same line every day. Right? You've, you've, you know, whatever preaching we're doing, you know, there, there's got to be some variety. We've got to know what is the right line for that person. And, of course, a, a lot of it dispen depends on inspiration from the heart, that you feel in inspired to talk to someone in a particular way. So Narada Muni preaching to... King Prachini Barishat, and he's inspired to tell him this narration, this allegorical example of Puranjan. And Puranjan means one who lives in the body. So who is Puranjan? We're all Puranjan, actually. We're all living in the body. And like Puranjan, he's thinking how to enjoy the body. So Narada Muni was narrating the experience of this person, Puranjan, that he traveled around the, the planet, and he had come to Bharat Varsh, and he, he was not finding any place very attractive to him. But he came to Bharat Vash and he came to describing how he's come to this particular city. So Prabhupada relates all of these different elements of the city to the material body. Narada Muni is going to go on in great detail to explain about the activities of Puranjan. And then after hearing all of this from Narada Muni, then Prachini Barishat is going to say, Narada, I am that Puranjan. Maharaj Prachini Barishat will finally understand that Narada Muni was telling him about himself about Prachini Barishad, who, him, he was, he was explaining everything in relation to him, to his situation. Sometimes we don't like to, we don't like to hear directly that, you know, we're in Maya or that we're doing something wrong. Right? Prabhupada sometimes use that phrase, satyam bruyat priyam bruyat. That you want to speak the truth, but speak it in a way which is pleasing. That's important. A devotee wants, for, a devotee is meant for preaching, and preaching means to speak the truth. We want to speak, but at the same time, we know in the Bhagavad Gita, the quality of the mode of goodness is to speak words which are pleasing to others. So we have to learn from preachers like Narada Muni how to do this. You know, sometimes maybe you have difficult time preaching to your family members. Maybe it's the wife preaching to her husband or sometimes the husband preaches to the wife. Or sometimes the son, the children are preaching to the parents. 
or sometimes the parents are preaching to their children. Yeah. Whatever, situa whatever the situation is, we want to pr present the truth. We want to tell the truth to them, but we have to present it in a manner which, is, which makes it pleasing because then it's much easier to accept. You know, if we just come down on someone and condemn them and say, you fallen, you rascal, you debauchee, you meat eater, you drunkard. You know, if we come down very heavy on, they will, you know, they may get very upset. They don't like it. But if we can present it in a nice way to get them to understand what is actually wrong, then it can have a very different effect. So Narada Muni is doing like this with King Prachini Barisha. He's going to tell him all about the, and the travels of Puranjan and the experiences which he goes through. In a most detailed manner, Narada Muni is going to describe everything, which is exactly in relation to Prachini Barisha. But he does, Narada Muni didn't tell him, this is you. He let the king figure it out for himself. Of course, sometimes if you leave people to figure it out for themselves, they may never be able to figure it out. You know, if you want people to, if, if they have to use their own ability, or their own intelligence to understand that what they're doing is wrong, then it may, it may never happen. They may never they may never come to understand that they're doing anything wrong. It's not easy to change a person's thinking, right? Somebody has been maybe eating meat for you know, 30, 40 years, and then you try to get them to give it up. Or you tell them, you know, this is wrong, this is not right. And they say, well, what can I do? This is my situation. Everybody I work with, my working environment is like this. That everybody is doing it. How can I avoid it? So preaching is not a very easy thing. We have to learn from other preachers like Narada Muni. How does he do it? How does he preach? We see that Narada Muni is very patient. And he's also very encouraging. He's helping this king to understand that what he is doing in his life is not right. The king was in the bodily conception of life. The body, thinking the body. We want to enjoy the body. He was performing the karma kandi, karma kandi sacrifices, animal sacrifices, thinking he will enjoy. Right? Puranjan, one who enjoys in the body. We want to enjoy. We have all taken our birth in a material body for that purpose simply to enjoy because we have that desire from the previous life. Therefore, we have taken the birth in the material world. So we all have this nature we want to enjoy. And of course, this is not wrong. The nature of the soul is also to enjoy. But the soul's nature is to enjoy in relation to the Supreme Lord. 
when we try to enjoy in relation to the material world independent of the Lord, then it creates problems. Now, King Prachini Barashat, he's trying to enjoy by doing animal sacrifices, which was something according to scriptures. At least he was acting according to Vedic injunctions. This encounter between the king and Narada Muni, it didn't take place in Kali Yuga. It was another Yuga. So, animal sacrifice was allowed. But still, Narada Muni points out the dangers. There are dangers even on the royal road. Just like we build a big road in Delhi, right? Do they have a royal road here in Delhi? Is it? I know in Calcutta, they have that royal road in front of the Victoria M Memorial. Because at one point, it was expected that, the, you know, maybe the, the royal family will come from England and they will ride on that road. So they made a big royal road. But even your, it's a big wide road and the road is very smooth, very nice, very flat. No bumps, you know. So you would think very safe. But there's also danger of the accident there. So even though following the rules and regulations, Vedic, we're following the Vedic culture, but still you can get problems. So Narada Muni pointed out to the king that you're doing animal sacrifices, but a little defect in your sacrifice and you have to suffer. So many animals you've sacrificed, they're waiting for you in the next life. You're going to have to suffer because they suffered. So that is the difficulty with Vedic sacrifices. A little inattention, something is wrong in the performance of the sacrifice, and you get bad result. You get reactions. So Narada Muni wanted to warn the king about this. The king was simply thinking, he would enjoy, he is going to enjoy pious activities. Just like in the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam, we have the example of another king who was giving great charity to Brahmanas, right? The highest charity. He was giving so many cows, and they were all cows who had young calf. And they were giving lots of milk. And he decorated the cows with pearl necklaces and silk cloth. And he put even gold on their hoofs and on their horns. And he would select qualified brahmanas, the most qualified brahmanas. This is King Nriga. Huh? King Nriga. He was giving so much charity, but... One day, one cow went to another Brahmana. He gave the cow to a Brahmana, but then he gave the same cow to another Brahmana. And because he did that, he got a reaction of stealing from a Brahmana. And when you steal from a Brahmana, that's very serious. So... King Riga, he did so much pious activities, but one mistake, one cow he'd given twice. And both the Brahmanas were upset. The Brahmanas were very angry. You gave this cow to me. How could you give it to him? And the Brahmana said, you gave it to me. It's my cow. It's not his. And the king said, I will give you each 10,000 cows. They both said, no. We have promised not to take charity again. We will take charity only one time. We are not taking any more charity. And because the king could not satisfy the brahmanas, the result was he had to suffer. He had to suffer for stealing from a brahmana. And the result was King Nriga became a lizard in the bottom of a well. 
and he had to live in that body of a lizard for some time until of course Lord Krishna came there and relieved him of that body so these examples are given to us to warn us of the danger of pious activities just simply doing this kind of karma kanda activities pious activities generally brahmins today are all karma kandi brahmins right they're, they're they're simply doing business catering to the material demands of the people the people come with material desires and the brahmin will say oh all right we will do this or we will do this yagya we will do this puja you should do this dan you should do this tapasya you know they will give some instruction what they need to do to fulfill their material desires but this is very dangerous thing to do very dangerous to do it a hundred percent there is no guarantee that you will be successful but if we do devotional service if we do a little service for the Supreme Lord Krishna, then Niha Bikramana Shosti Pratyavayo Navijate Swapama Piyashya Dharmashya Trayate Mahatopaya. In this endeavor, there is no loss or diminution. And a little advancement made saves us from the greatest danger. So Narada Muni, his business is to go everywhere and not to satisfy the material desires of the people, but to give them Krishna consciousness, to awaken consciousness of their spiritual identity, not to be thinking about going to higher planets and enjoying in the heavenly planets not to be thinking about enjoying drinking somaras or the heavenly damsels all the damsels the beautiful ladies of heavenly planets but Narada Muni wants to give the highest thing the highest thing the, what is the highest thing that is Krishna conscious bhakti yoga one who becomes Krishna conscious he becomes fully satisfied he doesn't want anything else just like in Navadvip Dham we were in there in Navadvip in Belpakor Bil, we, we heard about the Nimbadichyas young men who were worshipping Lord Shiva and they were offering bell leaves to Lord Shiva Lord Shiva became very pleased with their sincere devotion and Lord Shiva appeared before them and asked them what benediction would you like and they told Lord Shiva what is the highest thing what is the greatest benediction you can give Lord Shiva told them the greatest thing you can get is devotion to the Supreme Lord Vishnu so they said then give us that that is what we want just like Lord Shiva told his wife Aradhanam Sarvisham Vishnu Aradhanam Param so Lord Shiva said the same thing to the Nimba teachers he told, the highest thing is devotion to the Supreme Lord. <coughs> so Lord Shiva instructed them, you go, he, he selected one particular, one young man, Nimbaditya, that you go there, you go through the forest, you will find the four Kumaras are in there and they will give you that, that knowledge. They will give you the highest knowledge. In this way, Nimba, Nimbarka, 
we came Nimbarka Acharya and <coughs> he is a representative of the four Kumaras in their Sampradaya. So the same way Narada Muni, he is giving the highest thing. We are all devotees. We are meant for giving the highest thing. We don't want to give some material boon. Oh, bless my daughter that she can pass her exams. Oh my God. After one exam, then another exam. Yeah. There's no end to the exams. Yes, may she pass her exam. The real exam at the time of death. Let her pass that exam at the time of death. And we're all preparing for that final exam. Right? And with the help of teachers like Narada Muni, then that final exam is not a problem. Just like the student who has been working regularly. When it comes to exam, it's not a problem because they're prepared. In the same way, when we practice Krishna consciousness seriously, regularly, intensely, then the final test comes. When the difficulties come, then it's not a problem. Then we can cross over all of these obstacles. So we have to Show that example to people. We want them to become Krishna conscious. They want to see the example. They want to see that this person is very serious about Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada convinced people because Prabhupada was very convinced. Because Prabhupada did everything in a very proper manner, in a manner which was very pleasing to Krishna. So people were very impressed and attracted by Prabhupada. Prabhupada didn't put on any shows for people. He was simply himself. He was a humble sadhu. He was a, a resident of Vrindavan. Even when he was in America, he didn't become an American. When the devotees in Los Angeles began to make sweets, they were, they, they, they were using chocolate and different things like this. And Prabhupada said, why don't you make the sweets I showed you? He said, where is the rasgulla and sandesh? He said, I taught you to make these sweets. Why are you making these, this other kind of sweet thing? So, Prabhupada had these standards, you know. He, people were telling Prabhupada, when you go to the West, you will have to use a knife and fork. Prabhupada said, I'm not going to the West to learn from them. I'm going to teach them. Right? And so, people, they could not understand this. They were thinking that, Swamiji wants to go to the West. He wants to enjoy the Western life. But Prabhupada went to teach. He taught people. Even Prabhupada went in the 60s and the 70s. In those days, all the young men all had shoulder length hair. And Prabhupada went there and he got people to shave their heads. It was unbelievable. You know, nobody, now, nowadays, shaved head is more fashionable, right? A lot of men, young men have shaved heads now. It's quite, not very common, you know. But in those days, in the 60s and 70s, especially in America and Europe, everybody had shoulder length hair. Nobody, very rare anybody had short hair. Everybody had the long hair. And Prabhupada went, got everybody shaved the head. To get somebody to be a devotee, you know, that, that was the biggest challenge to get people to move into the temple. Would they be willing to shave their head or not? 
<laughs> but Prabhupada did not compromise with these things, you see. Prabhupada spoke the truth. He made, but he made the truth very attractive. That was the point. He, he knew how to blend everything together in such a way that Krishna consciousness became so attractive. Chanting and dancing, the nice prasada, and then also Krishna conscious philosophy. So in this way, Prabhupada said, he said, just like you have to give a child some medicine. So the child thinks, oh, this medicine, no, no, mommy, I don't want medicine, no. So then the mother will say, no, we'll put, we'll put some honey, we'll put the syrup, nice syrup, nice honey there with it. So the same way Prabhupada would put the sweet thing with the medicine, you see. The medicine was the, you know, the four regulative principles, but Prabhupada would make it very palatable. He would give us some nice uh, sweets to go with it. He had his bottle of Iskon bullets. Right? Somebody wants to leave, somebody is thinking about going home, giving up Krishna consciousness. So they'll say, go and see Prabhupada. And they'll, they'll go, go and tell Prabhupada you're leaving. And they would go to see Prabhupada and Prabhupada would say, here, take one of these. And then they would eat the Iskon Golobjaman. And they'd say, and then Prabhupada said, now everything okay? He said, yeah, yes, Prabhupada, everything okay. Right? So as soon as they had the Golobjaman, then they know I cannot give up Krishna consciousness. There's no way I can go home. So th this was Prabhupada's preaching, right? This is how we have to preach. There's many different techniques in preaching Krishna consciousness. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati also, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he utilized many things in the service of Krishna. Usually, be, previous to Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, people, sadhus, were all barefooted, no shoes, walking. But he came with leather shoes, riding in the car, and with sewn cloth. So he revolution, made a lot of ch revolution in the position of the sannyasi, the preacher, for the sake of preaching, going to meet the aristocratic British people and bringing them out to Mayapur, doing things like that, he would adjust himself. And people would respect. They think, oh, he's, he's very good. He's a very different man. So, of course, and he also supported it. He justified it on the basis of Shastra that Rupa Goswami teaches us uh, that actual renunciation is to utilize everything in the service of Krishna. All right. There's different kinds of renunciation. There is falgu varagya, which is false renunciation, giving up everything. But Yuk Rupa Goswami presents yukta vairagya, utilization of everything in relation to Krishna. So if we are if our consciousness is that we are using everything in the service of Krishna, then there's no fault, then there's no harm. But it's a dangerous thing. We have to understand it's a fine line between what is for the service of Krishna and what is for our own sense gratification. So, don't be attached. That's the point. Be attached to Krishna and Krishna's service. 
building big temples, just like this Delhi temple was a great labor to build this first temple here in Delhi. It was not easy. It was a lot of hard work, a lot of effort by many people, and many great sacrifices were made to build this wonderful temple. So now this temple is not just for our eating and sleeping, but it's a base for us to go out and fight Maya. And we can see very nice results. A lot of preaching has to be going on everywhere in all around Delhi. So many temples have come up. So many centers and so many devotees, so big congregation. We could never imagine that now our Krishna consciousness movement could expand so nicely around this area here. But Prabhupada actually said, should be temple in every marketplace in Delhi. So we were yesterday, I had the opportunity to go to, to, go to Faridabad. I saw the temple there. Many people were there also. I also visited one base, very big house. Sixty young men were living there. Oh, oh. A lot of preaching has to be going on. It's all of these activities, very wonderful. So, please continue to preach in this way. Distribute Krishna consciousness, and certainly Narada Muni will be very pleased with you. Hare Krishna. Any question? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you, Maharaj, for a wonderful class. It was very inspiring. My question is, is at the beginning of the, your class, you spoke about uh, Narada Muni preaching indirectly because people sometimes don't like to uh, be told directly. Um, so in this particular instance with Prachina Barishat, that we know at the end he didn't get it still. Um, but there's another instance where Narada Muni's preaching indirectly. This is earlier. Uh, well, actually later. He's preaching to the sons of Daksha, the Haryashvas and the Savalashvas. And he also preached indirectly. But they got it. So my question is, in this regard, is why did Prachna Barishat not understand the indirect uh, allegory and the Haryashvas and Savalashvas did understand it? Well, <laughs> everyone's an individual. You have to, we have to appreciate that the, the sons of Daksha, they were very pure hearted souls. And they could understand. They could pick it up more, more easily. King Prachini Barishat is an older man. He's more attached. Prabhupada said education is for young people. Right? <laughs> education, when you're old, is very difficult. You know, do you find old people going to college? It's very difficult for them to, be, to get education. But education is usually much easier when you're young. So the sons of Daksha, they were young. So they took the message. They understood quickly. But Prachini Barishat is an older king. He's waiting for his sons to come home so, so he can retire. He couldn't understand so quick. That's my understanding, my, my example. Okay. Thank you. Another question? No? Yes? Thank you, Maharaj, for a wonderful class. Um, you were speaking about the 
you have to practice regularly, seriously, and intentionally to so that then there won't be any problem. Because we have we have been from we are having a very bad history, and it is really the senses are troubling us, and uh, a person who has been pious or he has, has a very good samskaras from the childhood, it becomes easy for them to observe in uh, spiritual activities. So people like me, uh, I have a bad history and I have to go deeper into Krishna consciousness, but how do we, how do we do that? Uh, how to apply this, uh, how to go more deeper, how sincere, how to bring the sincerity in our own well, we have to understand that you, we can't say there, won't, there will be no problems. There will be problems. But the, diff, the point is that if we are in Krishna consciousness, if we've been doing proper sadhana, when the problems come, then we can tolerate them and we can go on with our Krishna consciousness. We have to accept that there are going to be problems. There will be problems. Don't think there won't be any problems. There will be problems. But if you are situated in good consciousness, then you can go through them. Just like Prabhupada gives the example, you're on a ship, you're crossing the ocean, sometimes there'll be a big storm, there'll be big waves. You don't get off the ship. You stay on the boat, right? You stay on the boat and cross the ocean. Now, I was just reading a book written recently by an ISKCON devotee, and he's writing about sannyas in modernity. And he gives an example there. He said there was a one book written by, I don't know who, who the person was, but he said it, it was an autobiography. Someone wrote an autobiography, and he was describing that when he was in his 20s, he approached someone, he approached some guru, and the guru was going to give him sannyas. And the guru asked him, are you going to be all right in practicing celibacy? And so he said, yes, I said, I'm, I, I'm all right. I don't have any problem. I've been practicing celibacy for several years. I don't think I have any problem. And, but the guru told him, he said, no, the problems won't be now. The problems will come later. Mid-age, in mid-age, he said, that's when the problems come. When you get to 40s or 50 sometimes, the mid-age part, that's when the difficulties come. Well, you're young, it's great. We're having a great time, yeah. chanting, dancing. Yeah, we're fired up, very enthusiastic. You know, more and more temples opening and more people becoming devotees. And we feel very good. But when you get to 40s or 50s, then that's a diffi more difficult time in life. You start to get a bit older. You, when you're a young man, you don't mind. You know, we sleep on the floor. We don't have our own room. We live in a room with 30 people. No problem. Right? But when you get to 50 or something, when you get older, you think, oh, you know. <laughs> It's a bit more difficult in old age, old and middle at the end, the middle part of the life. That's a difficult time, and that's a time when you have to be very careful. You have to be very strict. You have to be very conscious that th this part in the life problems are going to come, and how to deal with that when the problems come. What do you need to do? You need to increase your hearing and chanting. You have to become even more strict, more serious in your devotional service. We know we have a tendency, maybe you say, maybe you don't have the some scars which so many other people had. I don't think that's a big problem. I don't think that's such a, but 
for everyone. The material body is there and the senses are there. We see even sometimes some bala sannyasis from the Madhva Sampradaya. You know, they're sannyas when they're seven years old. They're taken from childhood, trained to be sannyasis, but even they can get difficulties. There was one of them a few years ago, some years ago, there was one of them. He was a bala sannyasi. But some woman, young woman would come whenever, and he would, she would always sit in front, and he would get, he got disturbed. He got disturbed. So he gave up sannyas. So even in that situation, it can happen. So, as devotees here in this Krishna consciousness movement, we have to be very cautious, very careful. Keep the association of devotees. Don't go into isolation. Stay with the devotees and keep up our practice very strictly, very carefully. It's the only way in which we can protect ourselves. Take shelter of Krishna. Thank you. A very nice question. Thank you. Okay, so we will stop here. Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Srila Prabhupada ki. Yeah.